Welcome back, everybody. It's Headlocks and Hotbacks here for a little Tuesday night table time once again. We are going to be heading back in time for our next set break tonight on the channel. And it's one that's been sitting off to the side here of my computer for a little bit. It is a sealed complete set of 1989 Bowman, and of course that is the big prize in here, the Griffey Jr. Rookie. But 484 cards in here, of course these are the uh, old school oversized Bowman cards, and unlike our last set break, you can tell that uh, this is indeed the factory plastic, but 20 bucks for this at the LCS. I thought that was a damn good price, so uh, yeah, I've been sitting on it for a while, and then we got some Bowman propaganda here. I kind of remember that uh, Mickey Mantle card there, but like I said, it's not uh, it's not the plastic that Dexter Morgan uses when he kills people on this box here, so it is factory sealed with the factory tape. Again, the Griffey is the big prize that I want out of this one. There's some other... Uh, good rookies in here as well. Hall of Famer John Smoltz. Um, oddly enough, this is Randy Johnson's rookie year, but he didn't make it in here for whatever reason. He made it into every other product of 1989, including all the updates and traded's. So kind of unusual that he did not make it into 89 Bowman, but here is that oversized design in case anyone is unfamiliar with it. I never really had a ton of these when I was a kid. Quite honestly, they are a little bit of a pain to um, store. There's Hall of Famer Jack Morris. We'll see a ton of Hall of Famers in here. But uh, yeah, they're kind of a pain to uh, store, so I don't think too many people are super keen on them. We'll start a socks pile. But there's a lot of uh, lesser name rookies in here as well, even though Randy Johnson didn't make it. Uh, oddly enough, Kurt Schilling didn't make it in here either, but. You've also got guys like Steve Finley, Brady Anderson, uh, Gary Sheffield, and names of that ilk. So, like I said, lots of rookies to be seen in here. It is also, a, well, that's a bad example of it, because that's definitely Dennis Eckersley, but some of these signatures, since that's the only way the name is shown on the front, can be a bit hard to read. There's a uh, Tom Glavin second year card. So on these cards, it can be a bit difficult if you are not familiar with uh, the player to figure out just who in the hell they are. But uh, nearly 500 cards to go through here, so I will do this in as timely of a fashion as possible. Like that right there. If you don't know who that is, you would never figure it out based off of the autograph. But some of them are a lot easier to read. And then, of course, some of these guys I'm just familiar with. Scott Geralt's there. Seitzer. Frank Williams. That's a pretty decent looking signature there. There is Harold Baines. Of course, if you are new to the channel, I PC Griffey, so I do not have his 89 Bowman Rook. So, again. That was the big draw for me, and of course, another one for the Sox collection there. I like to uh, check out as many products as possible here on the channel, so first time checking out 89 Bowman, and we will see it all here. There is Jim Rice. I believe that was either his last year or second to last year. Good old Eric Shaw, can't miss him, especially with that mustache. Ruben Sierra there, and I think that last one was Candy Maldonado. I will uh, not waste time and flip over all the cards to the back of every player that I can't figure out who it is. There's Bobby Bo. Signs it Roberto, that's pretty interesting. Roberto Bonilla. I don't think I've ever heard him referred to as that before. There's Rhino there. Along with uh, Bobby Bowe's rookie, we did 87 tops a couple of months ago. Found his rookie a couple of times, as well as the Barry Bonds. Make sure you go back and peep that video out. There's the wizard, 
Ozzy Smith. So we should have a nice uh, Hall of Famer stack once we're through. Rick Sutcliffe. It's interesting how the positioning of Sweet Lou Whitaker of all the autographs is what the hell happened there? That is unusual. The positioning of uh, the autographs is not the same on every card. You know, some can be in like bottom right there, like that one on Roberto Alomar. Most of them are basically just across the bottom, like these ones here. There's Barry Larkin. Then you'll see a few with the auto, like up in the top left. There's Tino Martinez rookie card. One I would classify as a lesser name, Mike Greenwell. Also a lesser name. Dave Henderson. And that will do it for that stack. Still a ton more to go. I think this, uh, Bob Brenly. We'll probably see a bunch of guys in here that are now, uh, there's Ricky, that have, uh, since gone on to be, like, managers. Canseco. Very happy Jose Canseco. Happy Jose, Darnell Coles, Charlie Liebrandt, and there's the Smoltz rookie card, so I believe him and Griffey are the only Hall of Fame rookies. And uh, again, these are a, kind of a pain to store, so I don't have sleeves that are big enough, or I do have sleeves that are big enough that will fit these, but they're loose, and I have a shit ton of them and they're all in a box and I didn't feel like digging through <laughs> trying to find the few sleeves big enough so it will fit directly into a top loader there's Dwight Evans that is uh, probably how I will be storing them until I eventually one day come across the oversized penny sleeves there's Nolan Ryan the oversized penny sleeve that I have and I want to say I have, like, there's Donnie Baseball. I think I've got, um, this Sandy Alomar Jr. rookie card. But uh, I want to say it's maybe three to four, like, and eh, maybe like seven by eight by four boxes that are just packed with penny sleeves. So that is why I didn't feel like taking the time or any wit. Jose De Leon, and there is Barry Bonds with a bottom right hand corner Sig, and then Ron Robinson, the last one in that stack. Definitely going through these a lot quicker than whatever our last set break was. I don't even remember now, and it was only a couple of months ago, I believe. Whatever one had that PBC on it, I remember I paid half off for it. So what the hell was it? I think it was 91 Bowman. Perhaps. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna have to look into that. There is Will Clark. Craig Lefferts. Again, some of these signatures are pretty easy to read, some are not. There is the Gary Sheffield rookie. This box was uh, definitely taken care of as well because outside of centering, most of these cards, if not all of them, are still in pretty damn good shape. Very uh, sharp corners anyways. Again, centering is not the greatest, but uh, not bad nonetheless anyways. Yeah, it was 91 Bowman. I got it. Remember, I got it for half off. So, uh, go back and check that one out. That was a indoor flea market find where the box was overpriced, but it was half off. So it was basically just regular price, <laughs> I guess. There is John Cruck, Dave Reggetti, Dave Schmidt. These are the Daves I know, I know. I forget what that's from, but I had a friend that used to sing that. I want to say it was from Tim and Eric's show, which I would not recommend. I don't know, I wasn't really a fan. That is Rich Gedman, I believe. And then Jody Reed, back-to-back -back Red Sox there. 
who just recently had their worst attended opening day since the year 2000, I believe. There's Robin Yount with uh, such a stellar mustache. So yeah, not a good start for the Red Sox, at least in terms of attendance. But I think a lot of fans, there's the Hawk. I think a lot of fans are like me. I'm not I'm not invested in the Red Sox really this year. There's the Steve Finley rookie card with a very odd grin on his face. Bryn Smith. Mickey Hatcher. Yeah, I will uh, wait and see what happens with the Red Sox. I don't know. Typically with baseball, I don't start getting invested until the summertime. There's Joe Carter. Bob Boone looking exactly like Aaron Boone. That was weird. Mark Grace with a graceful looking autograph. Still have not come across Griffey, but I am not concerned just because of the packaging of this. And again, I've never really had uh, any issues with buying anything from the LCS. Which I will have to... Uh, possibly, there's Eric Plunk and Greg Maddox. So at least we had to see Eric Plunk, but at least we are rewarded with a Hall of Famer right after, I suppose. But uh, yeah, my stock of cards, there's Strawberry or boxes has uh, officially run dry, so I need to uh, make an LCS trip. There's the rocket. And I recall these, we did open, I wanna say we did a pack of 89 Bowman at one point maybe, or I can't remember where we came across it, but there's a, a card that looks like that that is uh, also has Griffey Jr. on it. It's not considered a rookie, but a Griffey nonetheless, so we should be seeing that one in here as well, even though like I said, I've already got one in my collection. There is Doc Gooden. But uh, yeah, I don't, so I don't know what we'll be ripping next time because like I said, I have to make an LCS trip or uh, I probably will stay away from the indoor flea market because it's, they still got pandemic prices on things there. It's a bit ridiculous, so I've Probably will give that place a break for a little bit. And uh, I'll check out some other places online. I'll have to go LCS first just because I will need something sooner to rip here with you guys. There's Hall of Famer Lee Smith. Anything shipped is generally uh, at least about seven days, uh, bare minimum. Paul Molitor and then Wade Boggs. Again, very well kept set here. The gloss is in nice shape, or if you can even call it gloss at this point. There is Hall of Famer Fred McGriff. I dig those uh, powder blue Blue Jays uniforms. That might be some form of blasphemy coming from a Red Sox fan, but uh, I still think they're cool. There is the Ripkins. So it's technically a Cal Ripken Senior card, but the boys are pictured on there as well. That's why the one there is uh, Edgar Martinez second year. That's why the uh, one with Griffey Jr. on there doesn't really count as like a Griffey Jr. card, I guess. Technically, I don't know it doesn't really on uh, some sites that you might track your collection. There's Eddie Murray. And Ripken Jr.'s base, that's a clean looking one. I know some places, I don't know if, I can't remember if Trading Card Database counts it as such, but uh, technically it's a Ken Griffey Sr. card. Which I will show you guys when we come across. There is Puckett. Still looking for that Griffey Rook though. Wally Backner, I believe? Some hard to read signatures there, so some of those ones I'm not familiar who they were. That is John Dobson, I'm familiar with him, only because I've seen his cards a hundred times, I don't particularly remember seeing him play. And then here comes that, yeah, so there is the Griffey Sr. card, but uh, as you can see, Griffey Jr. is still pretty prominent on that 
I'll set that one aside. Like I said, I've already got one in my collection. And then Bert Blylevin follows up the Griffies. And we're getting a lot closer to uh, the end of the box, a lot quicker than the 91 Bowman. That was Rock Reigns there. So those Expos uniforms are pretty cool as well. Mike Schmidt, Jose Riho, and then there we go. There is the Griffey Jr. rookie card, and that one is pretty snazzy looking as we check out the back here. That one is pretty damn clean, man. I might have to actually go physically searching for one of those larger penny sleeves, but we'll just house it in the top loader on its own for now and be careful with it, but another Griffey rookie for my Griffey rookie collection. I believe I really only need the upper deck. Um, I don't have his uh, I don't have his tops traded. And what I would need as well. Um, got his Fleer, got his Donruss, that was our first time pack pulling one ever did that last year. That was a pretty big accomplishment for me. That was a Big Mac that I set aside there. Alan Trammell. Somebody with some big old dipper in the side of his side of his face. Yeah, let's see if we can't uh, grab everything all in one handful. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this video if you've made it to this point. I hope you all did. Anybody still watching, uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up down below. That was a Royce Clayton rookie there. Uh, like this video if you would. There's the Alamars. Definitely appreciate all the support we get here. So it's Sandy Alamar, I guess, senior card. And uh, of course, if you haven't subbed to the channel yet, there's Ellis Burks. Make sure you hit that subscribe as well. Like I said, I have no idea what we're going to do next time we come back for another box opening. But of course, got more game stream highlights. There's Dave Winfield. And uh, reactions as well before we get there. So I will find something in my travels that we have not seen here on the channel. The checklist rears its head again. Another checklist as we hit our. There's a. What is it? Bob Stanley. It almost looked like it said Paul Stanley. Sans makeup. <laughs> there is Gary Carter, Steve Lyons, and Bo Jackson. It's a pretty cool looking one. Kirk McCaskill, Tony Gwynn there. Last few cards. So, again, got through this a lot quicker than our last one. Another checklist. They all appear at the end of the box, and that will do it for this 1989 Bowman baseball set break. Of course, the big prize, that Griffey Jr. rookie, but uh, a Smoltz for my Hall of Fame rookie card collection as well. Nice stack of Hall of Famers and a nice stack of Red Sox PC items for me, even though they're all commons. I collect anything Red Sox really. So overall, pretty satisfied with this purchase for 20 bucks from the LCS. Can't really go wrong there. Again, I hope you guys liked this one and will uh, come back for whatever I have in store, whatever I find next time we open up a box here. But until then, enjoy the rest of your night, guys, and I'll catch up with you again really soon. Have a good night.